Welcome to the Work in Progress podcast, where we keep our whip in check. And now, here's Michelle, certified coach and founder of Strive Coaching Studio. Well, I will, I'll get started then. So this is the Work in Progress podcast. And as promised, my intent is to bring you some amazing, wonderful, experienced, and valuable guests who have so much to offer and so much wisdom to share. And I'm super excited today that I have an amazing guest. Um, Erica Lockwood is with Joseph Chris Partners. And Erica and I go far, far back. While she has been very busy and so have I, we met many years ago. And I am just delighted and so appreciate having you here today, Erica. Thank you. You are an executive recruiter with Joseph Chris Partners. You've been there for over 22 years. Is that right? That is correct. Call me crazy. (laughs) You've seen a few (laughs) things going on over the years, huh? Oh, just a few. Just a few. You know, it's been pretty boring. No. Yes, you know, it's always on our to-do list. Like, uh, I'm going to write a book. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I could have several novels, uh, just finding the time to write them. Yes. That's just it. Just finding the time. Cause you're busy. There's always something going on in the market to, uh, keep you, keep you on your toes. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Never a dull moment. No. I, that's why I love what I do. No day is ever the same. So I'm, I'm appreciative of that. Yeah. And this market is no different. It's been an interesting one, which is why your timing here oh. is perfect. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to be here. Well, thank you for inviting me. Glad it worked out. Yes. So tell us, um, the main reason I wanted to have you here today, or for many reasons, of course, but one of the big ones you and I talked about is if we're all a work in progress all the time, how does that apply to our career and our job or our job search or what we, our goals and where we want to go? And, and, and I love that you offered up this particular angle in talking and speaking to the audience from that perspective, since everybody's at a different stage of where they are in their career. And I'd love to talk to you today about what are the things that people need to be thinking about and what is important right now. Um, and I'm sure we're going to get into some really good conversations, but tell me what your thoughts are about how people should be looking at their careers and their career path right now in the midst of everything that's going on. Sure. You know, it's, it's interesting because after you talk with so many people over the years, it's, it's amazing. 22 years is I mean, a lot of great things have happened technology wise. All, everything has just been crazy, but there's still a basic element that you just can't escape in human nature. And people want to feel fulfilled. They want to wonder and think upon what's next for me. And, you know, what do I want to do when I grow up, um, I guess. Now, I will say, I have talked to some really interesting people over the years that, you know, they've kind of stuck in my head that they're very, very goal driven. For instance, it could be by the time I'm 45, I want to be fill in the blank, you know, whether at this level, this, you know, job title, whatnot. And they're very driven to, to get there. That's not, I'm not going to say it's entirely rare, but that's not a normal conversation you know, that I might have every day. It could be next step, what somebody wants to think about as far as the next step. But I'm a huge believer in, do you have to have your whole life planned out? Because we know there's turns and got to put it in reverse and maybe do something different. Or there's been a lot of people, especially during COVID, that they've reinvented their whole self. You know, they've gone into a different industry, into a different skill set. It's okay that you do that. You can change the the plays, right? Let's we'll talk football, right? But, you know, just to have some sort of a plan and how to get there instead of 
feeling like maybe you're in a pinball machine and you're just bouncing around. So the one thing I love, and there's many things I love about what I do, but just having conversations with people every day and just hearing their thoughts about what they're doing in their career and how it might affect them, their personal life, you know, whether how they can provide for their family or maybe the stress of how many hours that, you know, it's good, bad, you know, it's a lot of different things. But, you know, just to have in your mindset to where you're not seeing like, oh, squirrel, oh, you know, there's a a shiny little diamond over here and you get attracted for the wrong reasons. You know, it's to be very much set in, okay, I, I love what I do. And if I were to leave this position, and that could be internally in your own company, I would want to move into this position and this is why. And, you know, just to have a direction on that, where you want to go. I've talked with so many people that have said, I don't ever want to be a division president. I see my division president go through so much stress, especially like through COVID, it's been crazy. But, you know, the stress that maybe a division president has Uh, that's not something for that particular person. And that's okay, right? You know, not everyone wants to be the president of the United States. Not everyone wants to run a company. And that's, that's okay. We need everybody in their respective um, places, um, you know, their key, key spots, but, you know, just to know kind of where you would want to go and and how you would get there and listen to other people. So, you know, from the work in progress part or professional development is part of that I really truly believe is, you know, to have a mentor or multiple mentors through your career and to think about that wisely and, you know, maybe not always have that a person in your own company be your mentor, you know, think outside of it because, they've kind of a skewed perspective and what they might share with you for direction if they know all the ins and outs of the company or the leadership or, well, yeah, I guess you could do that, but I've never seen that happen here. You know, you you want to reach out to someone that's maybe been there, done that, and also to mentor other people because you can get so much from that. I think that's just a huge thing that we we don't collectively, we don't take the time to do. And that can really help you develop yourself and more, more than you would ever know, more than, and more than a class that you might take or a webinar, those things are great. But to, to really reach out to, coaches, you know, business coaches, um, leadership coaches, whatever you feel like is missing to have that relationship, because that will really set you apart from maybe others who are just kind of doing the pinball thing. And, and, you know, that's okay, but you want to be, I feel like you want to put your best foot forward all the time. And you can't do that kind of doing the same old, same old. Yeah. I love that you're talking about really knowing your why about why do you want, why do you have the goal you have? Why do you want to get there? Why is it so Mm -hmm. important to you? Because many times, at least in our society, we're told we should want the next thing. And that isn't necessarily a reason for it, but knowing, you know, I like to call it your superpower, like knowing your superpower, what are you really good at that, quite frankly, the division president is not as good at as you are and maximize that and be the best at doing that because that's how you contribute so much value to your organization. So do you have to do a lot of coaching with people through that about what's their why and what's their superpower or things of that nature, those the kinds of conversations you have to have? You know, it's funny. They just, they kind of just roll into that give and take of a conversation. But I guess that for me, 
I'm a conversationalist, you know, so I just like to know what makes someone tick mm. and maybe offer some advice or some suggestions on, you know, well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? That might be my teenage son's friends or people that I know that are my friends outside of the industry or certainly can be people in the industry that I talk to every day. I really enjoy that. But sometimes people don't have that on their sleeve, I guess, you know, like what their why is and, and why they do what they do and where they want to go because you're living everyday life. You get up, you, you know, get the kids their breakfast, get them to school, uh, you know, run all over crazy. And you're like, well, I, I work because I have a mortgage and I need to send my kids to college. Absolutely. You know, we all get up and go to work and hopefully love what we do. I'm always saddened by pe to hear people that are not that, um, Yes, you know, we we are compensated for that, but what is it? I, I'm just a big believer in I want to leave a legacy for not just my kids or my grandkids or family, but for the industry and the people that I've <clears throat> interacted with through the years that I want to leave a legacy. And so I need to know exactly what that is and what that looks like. Can that evolve through the years? Absolutely, because something might roll in that's like, wow, I didn't realize I had passion for this, but this is great. So, you know, it, it's the, there are great people that I've talked to, seriously, they've been a superintendent their entire career, maybe 25 years as superintendent. They love being a superintendent. They don't want to be anything more than that. God bless them. Yeah. You know, they know what they're really good at doing. They enjoy it. And I'm sure their company is very grateful that they love they love doing that. That that can be that can be a skill set that has a little bit of a revolving door, right? You know, it's kind of one of those where people get plucked out to to move up. And that's okay too. The companies are really thankful for people that society might think, oh, well, they don't have the drive to grow. And it's, no, that's not it at all. You know, that's not it at all. They're going to work. They're working hard every day. They love what they do. It's like the person who drives, you know, picks up the garbage. I mean, God bless them. You know, I had, when I lived in Indiana, I had the most happy garbage guy ever. He loved his job. And I'm just like, thank you. You know, I can tell you love your job. And I'm really thankful that you're willing to do it. Because there are a lot of people that are not, you know, and that's a really good example too. just be whatever you do, do it with joy and love it. But if you want to do something different, have a plan. And if you don't know your plan, there's someone in the world, your world, that's you know, if you just think about it and think, use your network and um, the people that you know, that would love to help you out. And that's big thing is just to encourage people. Yeah, totally. And building relationships with people over the years in the industry really has so much impact for you, no matter where you go. And you don't even know where that will be. I cannot say that for my story. Like here you and I are, we met years ago, <laughs> job transition for me. And um and, and, and you just never know where your network of people will come back into play for you at some point. I love what you said about, um, you know, the example of the superintendent or the, gar or the garbage man. It doesn't matter who it is. It's how you define success, right? Like, what is success to me? Well, we don't know what that superintendent has defined as success, but he's, he's getting it done. That's what makes him happy. That's what his fulfillment is. That's his why. That's it. He's using his superpowers. He's passionate. Like, to me, that is success. It doesn't matter what your title is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Society really does kind of throw shade. Use <laughs> some of my teenage son's um, words, but, you know, it's, it's the throwing 
throwing shade you and like oh you know if you're not if you're not moving up and and it's you just you've got to know you you got to be happy where you are and there are people like that and I I just so enjoy speaking with them yeah totally so um in terms of the different generations since you kind of talked about that a little bit what are you noticing as some of the changes in the new generation um, from a career standpoint, what the goals are, what the motivations are? Are you noticing shifts in the trends right now? There definitely has been a continued shift, you know, especially again, you know, over the 20 years, you know, we have multiple generations in our workforce today, right? And so uh, the this morning I was having conversation with an individual who is probably more in alignment with my age. And he's like, well, you know, benefits are really important to me, the insurance, uh, you know, things like that. So it's kind of more like a lifestyle thing. Uh, and just being respected across the board, doesn't matter what the generation is, people want to feel respected. And to know that they're valued in their company. And that is not just a really pretty sign at the, you know, at the front of the building, you yeah, know. Marketing. We're not talking about marketing. Yeah. Exactly. It has to be from the top down. So culture is very important. You know, I think that millennials um, have just, you know, have gotten such, they've gotten a bad rap. Totally. Um, and of course, then they give it back to the boomers. You know, there's all of this kind of funny stuff that happens, but you know, there, there are wonderful, amazing individuals in all of those generations. They, I think the biggest difference is the communication, the mode of communication that generally is more accepted. So, you know, for the, the younger, the, the youngest generation coming into the industry and, and is now here, you know, they're going to be more texting, email. Uh, so it might take their manager to say, hey, I, I know that that's your preferred mode of communication, but we really need to pick up the phone. You know, the phone is not going to bite you. Uh, I hear that a lot from hiring managers, you know, as we just have conversations uh, that they'll say, gosh, you know, you say, well, did you call? Well, no, I emailed and I text and it's like, please call. Uh, so like there's that too. All the time. <laughs> exactly. Right. My daughter said, mom, why would you ever leave me a voicemail? I'm like, that's what I do. <laughs> you know, I'm like, if it wasn't for voicemail, I'd feel like, you know, I don't matter. But she's like, I don't even listen to them. So a lot of it is just educating ourselves wherever we are in that generation phase, because wherever we are sitting from our own age, we're still going to interact with others that you know, that the other generations that are going to surround us. And so just being mindful of the communication piece of it. Uh, and then, you know, I think that there are a lot of very driven individuals, again, in all of the skills, or excuse me, in all of the generations, the, the varieties. But, uh, you know, I, I think that it is not unusual anymore to see the 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 younger generations just really want to know what what's expected of them, what's the path, what do I need to do to grow. Um, the other thing that I see, and I have to explain this to some of my um, client companies, is that the days are over or there, it's very rare to find someone who has been with a company for a long time. They have a very long tenure. And so the younger people have tended to just, you know, maybe go a couple years in a company and then move to another company for a few years. It's a really hard pill for some people that have been maybe with their same company for 20 years and they've never done that. And they've always kind of 
had a bias as they've looked at the resume, like, oh, job hopper, they have two uritis, you know, whatever the, the terminology you would want to call it. And it's, it looks that way. It's just, it's different, but it's becoming more of the norm. Mm -hmm. And so if we want to look at people as a whole and, and not uh, set somebody aside because of that and still maybe have the conversation, I think that that's going to have to be more of the trend, just to be open to that. That's why I love what I do in our world because you, we have conversations. We don't just look at a piece of paper being a resume because there's so much more that flows through that you can get from a conversation. And you know, if, if you just automatically discount someone because of what's on a resume. And it could even be, let's say, a title. Um, titles are, they mean everything, but they can mean nothing at all sometimes. Boy, I just wish they every company had the same title for everybody. That would be so nice. But, you know, uh, I had a conversation with one of my clients yesterday, and they their finance people are very operational, very strong, you know, business partner for division president, but their title may not be indicative of that, meaning it's a controller title. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm talking with someone who has that acumen, but they have a director of finance title, they're like, oh, that's a step back. And so Likewise, people can look at a resume and say, oh, this person took a step back. So people are generally very concerned about how that looks to society again. You know, it's going to look like I took a step back because the title isn't reflective of that. And I'm a, a huge believer in a title doesn't make you, it doesn't break you. It has to be the right company, the right culture, the right opportunity. What are the responsibilities? Let that other stuff wash out. But there are some very, you know, let's just say people that are not willing to just bend on that. I don't know. You know, they're, 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 they're very concerned about how that might look on LinkedIn or on a resume. And that's unfortunate, but I, I understand. I'm, I'm pretty chill. You know, I'm like, hey, that's, that, that's understandable. But just, I feel like if people would just be more open to not worry about the title, it shouldn't be about the compensation. That washes it out. You know, if you're the right person and it's the right company for you, that piece will always, always work out. Right. It really great opportunity. That's a perfect fit for you. Yes, really yes. You want because the title is not exactly. And some companies are getting very creative on some of their titles on purpose, and it sometimes that throws me for a loop. I'm like, what? that's a new one. <laughs> that is a new one. I've never heard of that, but I've got to do a little bit of research on that. But you know, it's whatever, you know, like, you know, I think a lot of times it just depends on who's maybe overseeing the human resources department. They might have some really cool ideas, you know, and let's get some different titles or, or whatever, but you know, it really should be. Ago. It's it, there's marketing and then there's what's really behind all of it in the real day to day. Like to me, the title is the marketing, but then get in it. Let, like that's right into the role and in, in the culture of the company. And it's a totally different, you'll know the real story. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the one, the one thing that I know happens more often than what you would like it to happen is the earlier you are in your career, you don't, you haven't had those experiences, good, bad, or indifferent. And maybe let's, let's focus more on the maybe not so good, that you don't know what questions to ask or how to pose questions as you're maybe interviewing through the process. And so you can find yourself in a position, in a company, in a particular culture that really is not a fit 
And if you would have maybe known maybe some of the questions or where to dig a little bit more, mm -hmm. you might have been able to save yourself from from that, you know, that that career oopsie. I always tell people there's it's like almost for me, you're almost allowed at least one of the oopsies, you know, we, it just happens. It happens, but you learn from it. You know, hopefully you know, people do learn from it and they know, okay, next time I'm going to ask uh, more. I'm going to really lean into that because this happens, but you don't know what you don't know. So, you know, if it's something super shiny, the other thing that I hear a lot is, and I heard it before, like, you know, be, during, before 2008, the pre-apocalypse, <laughs> um, you know, that there's a huge false sense of security with people in general that, hey, if I'm working for the biggest builder in the country, I won't lose my role. Um, you know, nothing is, is going to happen. I'm, I haven't made in the shade. And, you know, we know that's not accurate uh, at all. And that's another thing that I always suggest to people is, and by no means am I making the public home builders out to be uh, monsters by, by any means. They, they, there's wonderful, wonderful companies. But to not disregard a private company that's really growing and has a really dynamic team, very entrepreneurial. It can be just as lucrative from a compensation standpoint, but far beyond that, much more, you know, uh, you have the ability to interact with decision makers and, and so forth. If that's something that's yet you can learn so much more than being, you, you know, just kind of several layers away from the people that you could actually learn the most from. So I've spent a lot of time through the years really explaining that part to a lot of people, no matter what level they're in, is don't, you know, don't disregard maybe a smaller company that they can really be just as competitive as a really big builder. And you just have to be open to, to hearing about it or at least to looking into it. Um, some people some people do it, some won't. So it goes back to your whole point at the beginning. What is your why? Where do you really wanna go? How do you define success? What do you want? What are you gonna gain? And there's, there's benefits to each of those opportunities. And there's so much in between all of that. So what, which one is going to be the best fit for you to give you what you're looking for? That's what it boils down to. Absolutely. It, it's, it's just, there's so many opportunities in the industry. And I think it will continue to just really evolve as it has with the technology components. And, you know, hey, the great thing about COVID, it was not great, but there were some positives. That's the one thing I said in March of 2020, after the president was done, I was like, well, hopefully this is in 2008. <clears throat> and also, I'm hopeful that something positive will come out of all of this. And so, you know, I do think that there has been certainly some positives. I think it has ne necessarily made our industry embrace technology, the online sales format, the really being connected all, every, every component to the company, because you had to be, you didn't have a choice. Everybody was not doing the kumbaya at the office every day together, you know, because you couldn't, right? In some states, it was a lot longer, than, definitely a lot longer than Texas. So, <laughs> you know, there were good things that came out of it. And there are still some people who are experiencing the, you know, at least a hybrid or work from home. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that comes up in a lot of conversations. People still want that piece. Yeah. Some companies are okay with it and they do offer it. 
and some don't, uh, you know, and, and hey, it's, it's a, it's, I guess it's a choice either way, but I would say that it's probably more common for people to ask about it than not lately uh, over the last six to nine months. Right. It's, it's an everyday comes up in conversation. Well, it makes sense. To your point, we have become so much more technologically advanced and able to connect. And we've proven so many capabilities as a result of COVID that, you know, it does make sense. There is an ability to run so much more efficiently in many ways. So what is the, what are the main reasons people are looking for that or seeking that in their lives right now? The, the why really is that they tend to live in metro areas that are plagued much more so by the heavy traffic, right? So you, on a good day, you might have a 30 minute commute yep. and the exact opposite on a not so good day, yeah. right? Uh, also, depending, if you think about the makeup of everyone that's working, everywhere, but let's, let's look at our industry specifically, you know, the, a good chunk right out of the middle are people that have kids that are in school, or it was probably a very wonderful thing and a new experience for someone as a parent to be able to be there when their child gets home from school. Or, um, you know, to not have to run around and race around and, you know, spill coffee and, you know, hopefully get your kid to school on time or daycare or whatever, uh, because you've got to spend an hour on your commute. So people feel more productive. Mm -hmm. There's the productivity part of it. It's really a difficult sell for someone who has been very productive mm -hmm. doing it you know, working from home, whether that's every day, most companies are that I'm, most of the comments are it's hybrid, you know, it's two, maybe max three days work from home and the other two, but I will say there's a huge a builder here in Houston that's pretty sizable, but they sold their office building. Everybody works from home. Okay. And I said, you know, you will have your pick of talent, mm -hmm. uh, if that if that's where it comes down to, mm -hmm. uh, that will be very that's incredibly attractive, sure. uh, you know, to someone if that's you know if that's one of their whys. Yeah. But I would say it's just like it's a balance, you know. That's probably the the number one thing because they are balancing. I first of all, I was productive mm -hmm. during this time of complete chaos. Probably, you know yelling at, hey, are you getting your home, you know, your math homework done? I can't be your teacher too, you know, and working and doing, you know, all of your teams or, uh, you know, whatever kind of Zoom meetings, you know, we were on Zoom overload. I think people got a lot more comfortable being in front of the camera. It was a very difficult thing for people like, oh, my, my hair you know, gosh, you know, people roll up and, you know, I just got to the point where I'd be like, uh, you know, hey, here, I'm here, uh, you know, and people still love you, you know, you don't have to be perfect. And so, you know, there's just the work-life balance of if you don't have to spend your time on the road, breathing fumes yeah. and really feeling unproductive because that sets in. You know, it's it's a resentment piece, whether that's what we want to call it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's kind of like I'm I'm sitting here two hours a day yeah. driving or sitting in traffic, and I didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because there's the balance between you know, okay, this camaraderie too, and building the culture, um, and you know, overhearing meetings and pulling somebody in when it's really important, like I. There's arguments for all of it. So where are we going to land? Because it's got to be somewhere in the middle. It's never going to be the way it used to be ever again. If anybody's going backwards, they're, I'm just going to tell you, like you're the dinosaur if you're still thinking that way, because it's not. 
No, it's not. And I think, I do think that some of the newer companies that are, you know, have kind of popped up uh, throughout the COVID, you know, whether that be from private equity funding, um, if they're doing the on the build to rent side or, or whatnot, there was a, yeah, obviously that's a big deal, you know, but those seem to be the companies more likely to be super creative on what that culture looks like and, you know, the flexibility that they might be able to offer. They do have that flexibility, the capability of that, because they don't have 5,000 employees. Right. If you change it for one person, you got to let it for 5,000 people totally. makes it a little more complex. So I get that. So for sure, for sure. It's a lot easier to create something today right. and move forward with it than, you know, be where you were, be where we had to be from a necessity standpoint, and then go back. And, you know, th yes, it, it's kind of like a, a you know, kind of gives you a whiplash. And that's not good either. And I realize when you're in leadership capacity, leaders really need to be present. Mm -hmm. And that, that can be difficult for, for someone, depending on where they are in their life, you know, from, you know, family uh, responsibilities or whatnot. So, you know, that's always, I mean, I'll have those kind of conversations. Well, you know, maybe, you know, just look at, look at where you are in your life and, you know, you only have your kids for a while, you know, they grow up and they stop really needing you except for gas money and, you know, <laughs> money, money, right? And that's okay. You want them to grow up. But, you know, again, I think society sets a pace for someone. You need to set your own pace, yeah. whatever that is. Well, and the pandemic's redefining what that, what that's going to look like for people, for sure. Right. I saw a lot of people retire. Yes. Did you see that too? Yes. And I thought it was really interesting. It, it really is. And that's really kind of, that's a great segue to what I was wanted to ask you next is, you know, we did lose a lot of our, our, our skilled, talented labor because of the pandemic for that reason. A lot of people mm -hmm. just said, I'm not, I'm done. I'm not going back again. And that was a tremendous hit to the entire economy in terms of labor. So I'm curious from you, like, what are you seeing now in terms of people leaving and moving and changing positions? Why are they leaving? Why are they wanting to change their jobs right now? What are, you, what is, what is, what are the common denominators here? Right. You know, probably the top would be just that work-life balance. Okay. Uh, let's say doesn't matter what kind of a company it is, but if the culture is more so, you know, just burn it at both ends and, you know, just go, 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 maybe has not been proactive on making sure there's enough people in place. And listen, I get it. You know, if you're looking for land people or purchasing people, they don't, they don't exist the way that they used to. And so there are some people, there are some skill sets in particular that really are hammered uh, and it burns you out. So I think just getting burned out and there have been, and I think they'll continue to be the trend of the acquisition, mergers and acquisitions, a lot of M&A stuff happening. And People generally get very concerned when there is a when their company is acquired, and they may find out that the culture is completely different. Especially if the leadership changes uh, vastly, like maybe just a hundred percent across the board. So, you know, almost culture shock things happening. So, just the burnout of you know, not feeling like okay, I, that you're doing your one job, you're doing like one and a half people's jobs or maybe two. Yeah. And I think people generally are very open to being a team player. And hey, if, if we're behind the eight ball, I'll give, it, I'll give it my all. But if it's a consistent thing across the board, then you know, somebody's not 
working a couple levels up as far as, hey, we need to make sure these people are supported. I had a client one time several years ago called me on a Saturday and he said, Erica, I'm, I'm driving by the office right now and I see four of my people there working and that bothers me. And he said, of course, he's telling me that because I was working on some positions to help him, you know, alleviate that. But he's like, that bothers me very much to the core because I don't want to lose them, but, you know, they need to be respected and, and I don't want them here six or seven days a week. That's, that's not the kind of culture that we have built here. So that one is always stuck in has always stuck in my the back of my mind, knowing that it bothers sometimes a leader just as much as it might bother the person who's actually there on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not a badge of honor to be there late or be there on Saturday or whatever. All of that. No. Time. Yeah, it's not. Right. If it happens all the time, that's a problem. You know, we do have some pretty big projects that happen in the industry and people, I think people are really proud to start those and finish them. They talk about them. They're super, you know, it's an accomplishment, but if it's just something over and over again, that's a concern. So I think COVID did create a lot of people looking around them closer. They had to be around, <laughs> you know, you were, yeah, but necessarily you were around everyone. And really just made you reflect on what, what really is important. Maybe, maybe someone sadly didn't even have a balance up to that magical 2020 time, right? Like what is balance? Right. What stay home and play sorry or monopoly or the Uno game that I love. I've made little kids cry sadly a few times, but um, you know, some people's never slow down yeah. and we had to slow down. I think that's a huge, uh, I think that's a, a huge thing that has changed a lot of where we are. So people are leaving because they're not feeling fulfilled that way. Um, there's concerns when there's a major shift in a corporate culture that can even be at a divisional level. Let's say a division president moves on out of the company to a region president position with another company and a new division president comes in, um, depending on that person's personality or how they fit in the organization, that might make someone not want to stay. Mm -hmm. um, are they giving it time? I think most people do. You know, I, I always look at it as like kind of like the Titanic. I think there's people that are going to jump in the cold water really, really, really fast. And then there's the people that, will you know, they're unfortunately much lower down below and they're like hey, I can't even I don't know I'll just whatever I'll stick it out it's this can't be happening and then I do think you've got like the 80 percent of everybody's like okay hey I'm gonna help little Susie until the the raft you know like I'm, let's let's all get off here safely or let's let's figure this out I think majority of people are in that 80 percent I think there's always the fast ones that jump there's people that are so risk averse that they just won't ever, they won't ever, um, good, bad, or indifferent. Right. What is your, um, you have given so much advice and direction and, and such great information for anybody listening right now. But if you had one piece of advice that maybe you, you haven't already covered or that you have that you want to expand on, what would that be to to anyone in this industry right now in terms of where we are in the hiring and career process? Oh my. Well, you know, it, our industry, whether you've been in it for two months or 20 years or more, you know, it's always changing. Our world's always changing. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it starts with you, mm -hmm. your own journey, what you want to do, what you want to be. And my biggest piece of advice is to always give back to the industry and to others by helping to develop or mentor someone. 
let's say someone comes in and they're newer in the industry, you know, just share your advice if they're open to it. I really think people are, but to be willing to ask questions of people in higher level positions, don't be scared. They want, they wish, I get that feedback all the time. They wish people would ask, why this? Can I go with you on that meeting? I'd like to know how a land deal happens. I've never done that. They just wish someone would ask, but the initiative sometimes isn't there because it's like, well, gosh, maybe I shouldn't do that. That's not my job. What if they say no? What if they say yes? Yeah. You know, because I really feel like the majority of them would. So just, you know, you, you won't, what they say you don't, if you don't get, if you don't ask, right? right. You know, most of the time, People want that. They're not going to throw it on someone if they don't ask for it. So it's a fun industry. And most of the people who are in it love it, like love it. And have they been do either for a little bit or a long time. But once you've been in it, it really does get into your blood. And it's such a rewarding, fun career. Yes. Wonderful people. There's wonderful people in it. And the the end product of giving, you know, building a home that will be filled with memories for many years to come for, you know, people, whether it's that initial buyer, and you know, there'll be other buyers that you won't meet down the road, but you know that, that there's just going to be great memories. I mean, it's just like a full circle of, wow, you know, you should have goosebumps. And I think that's what really snags people and why they come into this industry and they stay and they love it. Yeah. Even if they leave, they still stay on the outskirts. They might work for a supplier or a tech company, something they're still very much interactive. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's fantastic. And, you know, I, I always say once it's in your blood, it kind of stays in your blood. You're right. Even if you are distantly... Absolutely. Thankfully, so many came back after 2008 uh, because they couldn't not. And uh, we were glad that they did. Yes, absolutely. Such good advice today. I want to ask you about this as well, because I know this is important to you. You are the director of um, diversity, equity, and inclusion at Jones mm -hmm. Chris. Tell me what we need to know what tell me where we are in this industry and and what advice do you have and tell me about that initiative well it is a big undertaking uh it is something that just like i was saying before like it starts with you that's another piece that it really starts with you because the how we respond to people and to situations is really dependent on our own self. And we're all, we all have a bias. We all have probably multiple biases that we don't even know necessarily exist. And so you have to kind of work those things out for yourself. But the NAHB had recently formed uh, a DEI initiative task force that I was very honored to serve on in the subcommittee. Um, and help create the toolkit that will go out to all of the, um, the state HPAs and then the local. And that is something that's very much embraced and a true initiative with the NHB, whether it's their builder or associate members, they want it, they, they are screaming it, if you will, from the, the rooftops that this is something that is very, very important. Um, whether that's our own, our personal interactions with one another, uh, how we're communicating uh, and, you know, behaving in meeting settings, mm -hmm. just out and about, you know, how, how to be mindful of what we say and what we think. And it's not going to happen overnight. So I think we will definitely be seeing more of, of this initiative um, through the NHB and that will, you know, certainly... Um, necessarily trickle down through the, the states and, and the local HBAs, but it will take, again, um, an individual effort for it to be something that is of importance in every location. Mm -hmm. And so I, th I think some areas are further along than others. Mm -hmm. That's okay. 
You know, I think that every area has its own uniqueness. Um, even when you go on vacation, every area is like, oh, you know, that's that's unique. Um, yeah, so I think every every city, every location where there is a, a local HBA, you know, they they have their uniqueness, and so they're the leadership there will be sure to you know communicate that. But it's going to take a lot of effort. Um, we need to really focus locally on communicating to you know with the schools, with young professionals, you know networking in our own local HBAs and the like the professional women in building, you know, just to keep networking with people and let people know that, you know, I think a lot of young people as I've talked with them, go to the schools, they're like home building, I don't want to swing a hammer. That's what they that that's immediately where they go. And kids, there's nothing wrong with swinging a hammer. Right. But at the end of the day, there's so, as we well know, so many skill sets in the in the industry, and that that's just on the residential side. You know, the commercial world is huge too. It's like it's a huge universe, and so it's a misconception right. that people have about what the opportunities are, and a lot of it is the communication or lack thereof, and it's kind of like how we were talking about training. Um, before even it's you have to you have to be willing it has to be a group goal you know to always be training or always building your bench you know always be networking talking to people about the industry it's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful way to make a living yeah. number one but that's really not number one you know I feel like number one is it's it's just a wonderful industry to get up every day and people love it and, and enjoy it. You get to pe make help people make their dreams come true. And that is really, like we were just saying, it's so powerful. And no matter what your superpower is, what you enjoy doing, what your skill is, it applies. This industry, it, it applies to every single thing, um, no matter what you do. So. Absolutely. Yes. It, it, it just, you have to have the passion, whatever that is. And some people are more touchy-feely with their own feelings than others. And, and that's okay. We're all wired differently. But I do think ha having someone who's a mentor that can help you embrace that, be like, oh, ask you why. Well, why not? Well, how? You know, it's like having a two-year-old around all the time, but they're your mentor, right? <laughs> why? Why? Why not? How? So, you know, but those, those are really good questions that sometimes we don't even stop to think about for our own selves. Why would we sometimes, you know, other than how is it already, you know, Monday, you know, that's a, probably a how question sometimes we have like, man, where the we can go, but, uh, you know, that. And leading people and mentoring people and not real, really recognizing that all those questions and all those people you have around you, you how much impact you can have on them and their career and, and what role you may have for them in, in helping them determine their passion and where they want to go. A powerful place to be if you're in leadership in this. In this Definitely. One question I love to ask people that I'm talking to is, you know, who think about like the leader, a boss that you had that was like your favorite boss and why? You know, sometimes it's really great to reflect on those things and think about why is that person my, why was that person or is, you know, my favorite boss? What did they do right? You know, uh, and then oftentimes on the exact opposite, I'll say, well, who's like the a person that you did not like working for? What traits did they have, personality, their management style? And then you start to see the contrast, right? And, you know, so you realize that people will either, you know, gravitate toward the, the positives and maybe instill and incorporate that focus and how they manage people. 
and interact with others and maybe you know train or develop others because of what they saw in that person. And that person, that could have been 20 years ago, person might not have any idea. No idea. You don't. know. So sometimes I'll say, hey, you know, if you can find that person if they're still around, I know they would love to just get a no. You know, I always think that that's a really big deal, you know, just for someone to say, I, I never thanked you, you know, because I always think about like my, my most favorite boss that I ever had. And, you know, sometimes I think I probably wouldn't be where I am today if she didn't give me the chance forever and ever ago, you know, to like, she like pushed me off the ledge, like off the comfort zone, <laughs> but I'm so thankful. So I push people out of their comfort zone here all the time. They're like, okay. Love that. And she, oh, maybe she knows that, but she might not even realize that she, that was her style. <laughs> yeah. You know, probably back then I probably didn't even know. Sometimes you don't know until you are doing it yourself. Right. So I'm just a huge believer too. And just being, um, just having like a thankful Thursday or something and just reaching out to people and saying, thank you, you know, for this or that. And it can be once a month, a month or once a quarter, but it's, it is, um, it's very, uh, I don't know. It's really moving for me. And I, you know, you always hope it is for other people. It's powerful. I love that. Well, you know, you said at the beginning, you hope to leave a legacy for your, for the, for the industry, for your family, of course, but also for the industry itself. And I think you, you clearly are already doing that, by the way. I mean, the things you're involved in are amazing. I don't know who doesn't know you, but if they don't, they do now. And they, will, they, will, well. they should. And, and, they, and, and what you have already done is so impactful and powerful for so many people. And I know that is your goal. And you're right. What a gift you get to have each day to be able to help people create their lives and their dreams in this industry. And I, I love that you came on and, and shared all of this with us. So, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, and so if anybody wants to find you, how do they find you, Erica? Well, you could safely Google my name. <laughs> uh, so uh, you can find me at uh, our company website, josephchris.com. So it's, you know, first name Joseph, first name Chris, uh, dot com. There's all kinds of information in there. We have a new website and there's a, a, a under the team, you can just go right to me and uh, all my contact information is on there. Um, of course, I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. Snapchat, whatever. Um, you know, you can pretty much find me anywhere, but truly you can just Google me. It should come up and um, my phone number is all, all out there, my cell or my work number. So, hey, you know, anyone that wants to connect with me on LinkedIn, that's always great. We would like to share a lot of industry information and, you know, some, a lot of positives, but it's a great place to network. I'm a huge believer. I'm so glad that LinkedIn started right around the time that the downturn did. I was really, really close because I encouraged a lot of people just to get really in, involved and active there because it's a great way to network and continue building your network with industry people. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, and you are everywhere, so anybody can find you. So whether or not you are looking to make a move or a change in your own position, or if you are trying to find all that wonderful talent available out there, you're, you're a matchmaker, basically. So. I, I am. I always say that I am a professional stalker. <laughs> uh, but yes, a matchmaker. You know, um, I just make the introductions, you know, but the introductions have to make sense on both sides. You know, it's, it's a big thing. I always tell our cl my clients, I can fill your inbox full of resumes. That's not what I do, you know, and that's not what you want. So, and and likewise, you know, candidate, not every company is for every person, every professional. And so I'm very mindful about that. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. No, you're, you're, you're the best in the industry as far as I'm concerned. Well, thank you. Appreciate that very much. Thank you for giving everybody all of this advice. And, and I know everyone is 
loving all of this information and I hope can, can apply some of this as changes in their own companies with everything that's going on right now because it is a big transitional time. And so all of this is so valuable. It is transitional, but out of crazy things come even like amazing things. So embrace it and come out all the better for it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again, Erica. I really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Hopefully I'll be back sometime very soon. I hope so too. I hope so too. Be sure to follow us on your favorite podcast and social media outlets to keep your whip in check 